better like you with the red cap. Yeah, 450 RPM pulses are kind of abysmal, but they are a lightweight frame. So if you're a hunter who wants a faster dodge cooldown, the lightweight frame is the key to getting a plus 20 invisible mobility, which means if you have 8 mobility, it's secretly like having 10 mobility. Pretty cool. So I have a hunter build that isn't really reliant on dodging, but it helps get my smoke grenade back a little bit faster because I am using Kepri Sting. By throwing a smoke grenade at the floor, it gives me wall hacks for a brief second. But if I also throw the smoke at an enemy, the smoke does incredible damage to them. So what I can do is damage them, throw a smoke at the enemy, and then chase my own smoke down to get wall hacks while the smoke cloud lingers. In the past, I've typically ignored the strength stat because as a hunter, I can just use gambler's dodge near an opponent and get my melee ability back entirely. But Kepri Sting makes it so that I want my smoke grenade up as much as possible. In fact, sometimes I throw a smoke grenade at somebody simply to gamblers dodge again near them. And sometimes a match goes really passive, so having that fast cooldown lets me break the stalemate. I'm also still kind of salty that I have high caliber rounds on this pulse rifle, but it doesn't seem to do much against sniper rifles. As you can see, nice little three piece, rampage times three. I land a head, body, head, and still get domed through it. What a tragedy. Anyway, since Chattering Bone is a legendary kinetic, this opens up my energy slot to use an exotic called Duality. Duality is a shotgun that is both a pellet and a slug. If you hip fire, it is a pellet shotty. If you aim down sights, it is a slug. This is really useful for playing Way of the Wraith, that is Middle Tree Night Stalker because I can activate Flawless Execution by crouching and landing a headshot kill, which Duality enables for me. Now I know the comment section is curious what I think of Duality versus Chaperone. I personally think Chaperone is a more competitive weapon, but don't write Duality off completely. If you're a more grounded player, Duality is fantastic. The problem is when you use Chaperone, if you're playing a hyper-mobile opponent and they fly in with a pellet shoddy, they will likely pick up the one-hit kill on you before you land a headshot or a double-tap body. It is so much easier to aim a hipfire pellet shoddy than a precision slug shoddy. So while you do give up a little bit of range in the slug department with duality, you gain the ability to hipfire a pellet shoddy and match that hyper-mobile opponent. But the problem is, you don't have Icarus Grip, so it leads to some inconsistency when you're jumping, as shotgunners do, to avoid other shotgunners. So you see the problem with duality. While it does enable a choice, you kind of have to stay grounded so it creates an even bigger problem than it solves. Of course, my videos are mostly about having fun with this game, and I'm trying to use a lightweight pulse just to change it up and get a different scenery. And duality fits the best with this build. Think about it, I'm using Way of the Raid, so I have to crouch to activate Flawless Execution. If I'm crouching, inner accuracy isn't much of a problem. So having the option of a pellet or a slug is a giant benefit considering that Kepri's Sting boosts the damage of a smoke grenade, which means I'm throwing nuclear smokes at people. This was stasis before stasis existed, and I'm having a blast with it. So the ideal combat loop is I throw a smoke at somebody, weaken them, and slide towards them. If they get out of the smoke and are hyper aggressive, it's pellet time. If they're stuck in the smoke, it is slug time, which activates flawless execution. Or even if I miss and pick up a body shot kill, I'm sliding into my own smoke, which activates the wall hacks. And from there, I can look at people through the wall and activate gambler's dodge to get another smoke, Unfortunate death there, but uh, this game plays a banger. I'm not joking. I exceeded my expectations with the lightweight pulse because this weapon archetype isn't too good. But anyway, back to this uh, combat loop I was describing. 
This is a lightweight pulse, so it makes my dodge faster, and I use my dodge with a perk called Outreach on my class item, which means if I dodge, it gives me some melee energy back. So it gives me about a sixth to fifth of my uh, smoke grenade just for dodging, even if I'm not near anybody. So when I'm really close to having the smoke grenade, sometimes I will just simply dodge because it means I will have the smoke grenade when I crucially need it to block out a choke point or something like that. I'm super excited to try out a similar build with two teammates rocking stasis to see if we can kite people into my nuclear smoke grenades. So it turns out this season that you can farm legendary law sectors and these legendary law sectors uh, limit the loot pool to just one type of exotic armor so it could be like legs, chest, or arms in the case of Kepri Sting. I've gotten really good at some of these law sectors simply to farm Kepri Sting and I finally got a roll that I consider good. It is a 60 total with a very low resilience, a very low discipline, and moderate stats everywhere else, which means that I throw everything I have into mobility, recovery, and strength, and then anything extra into intellect. I used to run five resilience as much as possible because that's what tanks getting one hit killed by a sniper rifle in an empowering rift or some sort of damage booster, but since it's way too difficult to have both 9 or 10 recovery and 9 or 10 strength and high mobility and 5 resilience, you can tell that I had to make some sacrifices to get this build operating. And I do think with one better legendary armor piece or a slightly better Kepri Sting that I could make an even nastier build possible. I like Kepri Sting enough that I think I'm going to go through with that. This exotic is insane, and I can't believe more people don't use this. The long story short is that when we switched to Beyond Light, Bungie changed some facets of the armor system. For example, the traction perk used to give an invisible plus 10 and a visible plus 5 mobility, which was super helpful for managing a hunter dodge cooldown, but it was unfair for controller players who felt that they had to run traction all the time just to get a faster turn radius and instead it is now zero cost which means that my builds that relied on traction now have to respec which means that since i have to respec anyway i might as well pick something i really enjoy and after getting a taste of capri sting i think i want to make a very very deadly build with this i'll still have my frosty super suit for neutral subclasses and for stasis but as far as something very specific sort of the way that my warlock uses starfire protocol I think it's worth delving into these Capri Sting. So I'm going to be farming Lost Sectors and doing the Lure Hunts or whatever they're called to try to get some armor and make this happen. Even though I go on a complete tear with this Pulse Rifle in this footage, I don't think I want to use this Pulse Rifle as a regular part of my kit simply to get a faster dodge. It is a cool boon that a lightweight weapon can do this, but I would much rather just use a 7th Seraph Shoddy and Ace of Spades. That's the problem, is I think Ace of Spades does a better job at managing range than a lightweight pulse rifle. Even if you spec it out with Range Finder, I didn't even talk about the perks that this can roll. It's only four in each column, but I really do think I have the best roll possible. You can get Range Finder on the perk one, the leftward uh, column, but even then, even with Rangefinder, I still think Ace does a better job. Now, there are exceptions, similar to the way I talked about uh, just using a weapon as it drops and creating a loadout around that weapon. Uh, what you want to do with a pulse rifle like this is to use a helmet like Foe Tracer, which makes it so that when a target is weak, you deal more damage. And since a pulse rifle shoots multiple bullets, at some point at the end of that burst, the remaining bullets will do massive damage. Whereas Ace of Spades will always kill in three shots, so on that third shot where you would be doing more damage, they're already dead. So this is why it makes sense on a lightweight pulse rifle if you're an avid Foe Tracer user. So off the top of my head, I can already think of that. But I'm not using Foe Tracer right now. So I don't really think that this lightweight pulse has a meta competitive place in my loadout, but maybe... I'll start using energy exotics like Lord of Wolves again, and I'll revisit this video.
but we all gotta admit, the sandbox, at least weapon-wise, is in a pretty good place if I'm even humoring using a lightweight pulse rifle simply because it's lightweight, even though we all know that 450 RPM is kind of a garbage arc time. And on that note, that wraps up the video. By the way, this is the Chattering Bone Pulse Rifle that you get from the Last Wish Raid. You can reset the chest each week and get two free drops on each character. Uh, I believe I have a guide for that. If I remember, I'll put it in the description. If not, it's a YouTube search away. Uh, a lot of people have done this guide on how to farm the chest. So go ahead and get your only lightweight pulse rifle uh, that is not sunset for another year. Take care, everyone.